Peep this one. Episode 24, we in the building. In his house. Yeah. Right now, we're going to have yeah. some fun, so put away the children. Oh, God. <laughs> the Freestyles is always here. You know I'm ready. We're bringing it live to you right and direct. Yes. And it's also very heavy. Oh, wow, I don't even know what this. that is. <laughs> nah, I don't know what I said, but you know what it is? What's going on, fellas? What's, 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 what's up? What's up? What's up? Yo, so I feel like we always talk about either serious epi- like serious topics, mm-hmm. fun topics. Mm-hmm. Fun Sometimes we have great interviews coming through. Exactly. Like I want to let's talk a little bit, see what you guys like. How is what's going on in your lives? So I'm going to ask you some questions. Oh, you got questions for right? us. In what? between the episode, the whole you episode, I'm just going to ask mm-hmm. some couple hey, questions. Ask and we're just going to talk. Let the audience see a little bit of our flair, see who we are as people, right? In between. So before we begin with the quote of the day, my question is, what is the weirdest thing you used to believe in as a, as a child? Santa Claus. Ooh. You mean to tell me that you got some... Some guy that just breaks into your house and just leaves presents for you, like randomly Yo. for kids. Mm. You you you're okay with putting your kids on a child's lap, on a, putting your kids on a grown man's lap, and is we cool with this? Yo, uh, to be we, honest, cool my mom this? never, my mom never. <laughs> it's weird. Never told me to about that Santa Claus. Story. Yeah, my mom. She was like, I got these gifts. And, <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. I, <laughs> those I bought those boots. Me. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't giving no. That weird. I ain't giving nobody else credit for my yeah, hard dude. work. Honestly, I do have a dilemma if I, if and when I have kids of should I tell them about Santa Claus? Like I Keep really real. don't think I should. No, I mean, no, I half the gifts from Santa, half from mom and dad. To hell with that! They all from me. <laughs> yeah. So what's the weirdest thing you believed in as a child? Um, I think the tooth fairy thing. You put your mm-hmm. tooth under the pillow. Right. Somehow money appeared in the morning. Right. Money was always there for every other kid, so I just thought it was one of those things. Like I put mm-hmm. my teeth under there. I got nothing, <laughs> so um, I lost belief in that. But I believe in like dinosaurs because I was like, "It's fossil, so at yeah. least that's real." Okay. So yeah, I think it was. But dinosaurs weird. is not a weird thing because it is. I know kind of, it's not weird. Yeah, but the tooth fairy. I would say the folk tale of um the boogeyman. Boogeyman. That was oh, always man. Grimm's fairy a big tales one. things. And it took me a long time to overcome like my fear of like sleeping in the dark because really? of that. Um, that's the best. The boogeyman, see. yeah. And I would wow. say tooth fairy. I would say along the lines of that. Oh, I always man. used to Boogie yeah. man. pull them suckers out and put it underneath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boogie man. What just... about you? Uh, two fair would be one. And and um, the reason being, I actually caught my mom. Like, I was like, wait. She would. I was like, yo, I'm getting these couple dollars. I'm feeling good. Dollars? I got dollars. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, you got one That's really one. good. Yeah. yeah, I got like 10, 15. Each, each tooth. Each tooth? Each tooth? Yeah, oh, that's really good, and then, man. And then um, she got ivory. Teeth? Then one time, one time she was <laughs> she was tiptoeing, and, tiptoeing on the mic. And she stepped on one of those that floor that squeak, mm-hmm. uh, and I kind of opened up. I was like, oh, it was you this whole time. Well, I'm gonna keep this money <laughs> yeah, going. I ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> but now the that's the weirdest weird. thing though, like that I was thinking of is the way people portray Satan. I know, I'm not trying to be all. Deep. Oh, that is true, though. Yeah, yeah. But, but, there's, a, there's a lot of conf- but, but the thing, yeah, the thing about it was, I used to always think they were two separate entities, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to be weird about this, but think about when they say God created the heavens and the earth. They never said Satan was there, so that means Satan God be must created. have create been created. Yeah. All right, and who would have created him? God. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Well, they made it seem as it was two separate, like. Satan was always just evil, mm-hmm. right? And God was this. So when I'm growing up, and oh, they don't let the devil. But didn't God create? Didn't God create the by devil? your logic? Right, yeah, right. By the simple logic, and mm-hmm. it doesn't take away my belief in God. It's just right. the exactly. way they used to use the devil in such a devil, 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 devil. Yes. made me think that this whole thing was he was on his own. He was cool with God. They were like brothers, you know. Right. And then he was he pulling up. Him. What's his Fast and Furious origin? And then, you know, you know the original, the original Stone Age version, <laughs> Stone Age Fast and Furious. Yeah. They like the flimsy, like. Da, 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 da. Oh man! But that that was one of the weirdest things. And then I'm not gonna lie, going to college and starting to increase your knowledge, it started mm-hmm. making me see things mm-hmm. different. Different. And then yeah. I started to almost said, you know what, Christianity ain't for me, right? Because of 
the, the folk stories. Well, right. you can be a Christian and not follow the Christian, not be a part of the religion. Your faith in everything is one thing, but you being a part of the religion is just being a part of the group. Right. Mm. You know, and, and, true. And, and the whole thing about the Bible is finding it out for yourself, like studying it. Yes, exactly. A lot of times people say study to show yourself approved, so... That's what we're doing, right? Right. Yeah, man. So that was a, that was a little dialogue I like. Mm-hmm. All right. What's the one? quote of the day, bro? Oh, I was waiting for the next question. I'm, I got some more. We got <laughs> some more throughout right. the show. Quote comes from Einstein. You know, maybe you guys have heard it. Out of clutter, find simplicity. From discord, find harmony. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. Ooh. Yeah, I Read think it one more time. Yeah, sure. so out of clutter, find simplicity. Mm. From discord, find harmony. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. Wow. You know, we all we all could resonate with the difficulty and opportunity. You know, right. but the clutter and finding simplicity, like there's so much stuff that we put in our own lives. We put our friends or other people's needs, favors that we owe, right. or we, we're what is it? Um, we used to be the gold standard. Now we're the debt standard because right. it's how much can you do for me so right. because now we identify as that as a society you know we have put so many things in there that value nothing but we hold a value within ourselves to it you know like i told my i wear beads yeah but if the beads pop they fall they go away mm-hmm. i'm still alive right i right. mean ain't no healing mm-hmm. power here ain't no magic mm-hmm. power ain't no magic stones not that you just jewelry i mean yeah mm-hmm. i know <laughs> it could be happening know. i don't know mm-hmm. But it could be happening. That's but, how you, you know. Lose, that, that's how you lose weight. I mean, my kind of <laughs> yeah. view is like it served its purpose. It served. When yeah, it, it served its purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when it bursts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's true. I have had a few that have popped, and yeah, they, it was weird that it popped at the times that it popped and why it mm. popped. It was. What all, was you doing then? It was actually I was explaining the situation about me and my lady, <laughs> right. and um, things were just kind of difficult. You mm-hmm. know, it was um, one of those things where you know you're always praying for the spirit to protect you, or right. Mm-hmm. Something to protect you, and then mm-hmm. you know something's happening, but you can't identify what's right. going on in the world. Definitely. And then it just came out of the blue, and it was like, "Oh crap! The truth is right here!" Mm-hmm. Wow! Yeah. And so it was like, once that happened, I stopped getting these like head migraines that I'd been getting for like two weeks, and mm-hmm. stress went away, and just re, I guess re, uh, found the organization in the chaos of your life. It yeah, just, you had that epiphany. Nice. Yep, and I found so much more harmony now. Um, right. It's been great, honestly. When I think about that quote, like, especially the clutter to simplicity part, like, a lot of times our mind could race a hundred different ways, like, how am I going to do this? What I got to do now? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That sometimes you just have to take it easy and just step back and be like, all right, I'm going to get these things done, but sometimes you just have to prioritize yourself over the, the clutter that's in your head because sometimes you get so lost. It's like a black hole. It can suck you in. And then mm, you see exactly. a lot of people go into deep depression. And you're just like, damn. It's just because they have, some of them is just because they have so much on their plate and they don't know how to categorize and, and step back and just enjoy even the smallest things. It's mm-hmm. like, like every time I do something now, like that is, I consider a milestone or even a good step forward, I reward myself by taking it Beautiful. easy. Beautiful. Mm. Whether it's a hotel, whether it's just saying, you know what, today, just gonna go. I'm just gonna go and lay down. Just gonna take it easy. Right. Sunday we went on a hike. Mm-hmm. Joint nice. was beautiful. Just to clear my head, you know, rewarding yourself. Sometimes just enjoying the simplicity of what life brings. Mm-hmm. Still, uh, yeah. So, for me, it's pretty. It's pretty straightforward. I, I do agree. Like mm-hmm. you just have to take that step back and just be like, all right. Where I'm at, and I think I did a um a post on that recently too when we went out to that hike up in North Carolina. Right. So it was just a great space. It was you, me, Randy. So mm-hmm. just to be there to hear the sounds and stuff, and it just kind of put things into like more organization. Like, all right, cool. I needed to take a step back. I need to take this breather, and it puts things in a lot more better perspective. So mm-hmm. yeah, man. Yeah. Love that. Yo, mm-hmm. thanks for sharing such a powerful mm-hmm. yeah, of course. Quote. Love it. Yo, so as we continue this journey, I got yes. another question. What you got? Go so what's the hardest lesson you ever had to learn in life to this day? Let's start with you, DeJounte. Get back to me. Get back to you? <laughs> Get back to me. All right. Why is you ready? Sometimes you got to lie. Ooh. That is the hardest. I'm still dealing with that right now. It's not fun lying to people. I don't like having to lie to people, but in the last maybe like two or three years, I've had to realize that sometimes if 
you know how they say like you really shouldn't tell a lie, mm. but at the same time, if you were a hundred percent honest, people would actually be upset with you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, they would. And it's weird because even like there's certain there's a show that I'm watching right now where one character he just doesn't he can't functionally lie mm-hmm. because if he does he just for whatever reason. Mm. So yeah, that's it's difficult. Like we really got a lot of people sometimes right. just to make things work. Ready? Yeah. All right, the John T. Let's hit. I would say no matter what you do, um, it doesn't really matter. You can't please everybody. Hell no. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the biggest lesson yeah. that I Ooh, learned. preach. Because like the adult life is like an immense juggling act and you can put yourself in so many places at one time, but then it's like, well, I have to keep things in perspective. Not everyone mm-hmm. can be pleased. And you would hope for the best that, you know, the people that love you and is close to you and dear to you can understand and have that inkling of thought with you. So I would say that would be one of that's one of the hardest ones. Yo. So this day. I can relate to that. That's mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. one of mine. Yeah, yeah, for real. I'll please mm-hmm. another can't can't please yep. everyone. You have to learn. Yep. You have to learn to put your first too. Mm-hmm. You, can't, you, can't you can't make them happy. You can't make them happy. And that's when you know you're not responsible for their happiness. Oh, no. yep. You can give them you can give you can give them anything and everything, and then they still wasn't there mm-hmm. an earth, earth, mm-hmm. wind, and fire song? You give it the sun, the moon, moon the, the stars, stars. right? You got some cold blessing. Yeah. Right. It still ain't enough. She's it's like, yeah. oh, why you give me this? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want it from this universe. <laughs> <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. I wanted right? everyone. <laughs> Shout out to Alan J. Don't never stop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. say that. Oh, man. It's oh, a whole lot of being in the house. Oh, man. Whoa. <laughs> Just say it. That's oh, trouble. Allegedly. 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 In, all, in, all, in all seriousness, on speaking like like mental inflictions mm-hmm. and stuff, like I saw that video with the follow up when mm-hmm. he was like questioning her, like, why, you why would you do this? And I'm like, the look on this man's face like was like straw. And I just felt, I felt oh, with him. Felt it. Yeah. Can't please yes. look at that. That shit was very painful yeah. to look at. They also got to stop throwing Tupac's name around. I am like, I am so fast. Yeah, leave it dead. And everybody, she needs to. Name. Dead. Everybody. Oh, well, yeah. That the, man's leave, leave the missing, missing. All right. I still believe in that. <laughs> but she needs to also <laughs> stop. Here. It's just like, she needs to does, stop. Is, is, any, is it just me or does it feel like anytime somebody mentions Tupac nowadays, it feels like cloud chasing? Yes. Mm-hmm. Anytime somebody mentions, like, Facts. Every yeah. time I'm like, oh, this is about Tupac. Oh, I remember this about Tupac. Why? What does that do? It's only going to get you views. It don't Seriously. make your career better. Yep. It's <laughs> mad weird, man. Just play the so, music and enjoy it. <laughs> like you mentioned in Tupac morning, you mentioned in Malcolm X. That's and a Malcolm problem. X probably did more for the black community. <laughs> right. nah, I'm, I'm getting on my soapbox. So, so efficient. <laughs> what about you? What's the hardest lesson? <sighs> Micaiah, I've learned so many lessons. Mm. I would say one of the hardest lessons was that I, it's not my world, meaning when we go out into public, it's not efficient's world. Efficient doesn't dictate how everybody belongs and what the expectation is of the vibe. That's not what it is. The expectation when you go out is enjoy yourself and enjoy the public and just keep it safe, keep it light. You know, I had this heavy expectation of, I guess it was me and my traumas before that had a fix. Mm -hmm. It was literally, I have an intention to go out and cause chaos. It was like chaos has to happen. And or if it's not chaos, oh, those two look like they should hook up. Let me get those two together. Uh, yeah. Or you know, <laughs> it's just matchmaking. Just inter- you messing with the public from uh, I don't know, from this like annoying, instigating point of view, like this fly on the wall that's bugging people. I think that was my biggest thing to get over. Was like, man, how do you just keep your opinion to yourself? Shut up, sit back. Take it easy and just watch things happen. You know, right. people watch is one of the mm-hmm. funnest things you could do. Just it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to learn how to do this people watching thing. Like sit back and watch it happen. It's fun. Mm-hmm. It on is. The island. You know, oh, I feel I mean, better about it now cuz in my people watching, I'm learning where I like to watch the people. So, it's not, I'm not saying where. <laughs> that ain't sound Yeah, oh, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah I was not going to say. We got, I mean, we got bird watching, we got human watching. <laughs> right, exactly. You bird watch, you yeah, human dude. watch. There's, there's certain places with that. You I'm peeping peepin watch. This. I'm new. No, I'm peeping watching. <laughs> Peep this bomb. Don't wait. Don't worry, You're not doing this. Peep this bomb is short for Peep these women. Yeah, with the binoculars in the tree to say, nah, this ain't back to future, man. Peep this woman. Peep this woman. Peep this woman.com. Whoa. What? Nah. Yo, no free plugs. We're not gonna. Yeah, no free plugs. Yeah, we're oh, no free plugs. No, but yeah. I think that was just really the one was how to get into um, public without my traumas and putting that all aside. Mm-hmm. Um, I think now it's been easy. It's really easy now. I think that was the hardest thing for me to overcome was mm-hmm. how to be in public without my trauma. 
like lingering. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yo, for me, one of the things that I learned, I was like, yo, people don't owe you shit. Nope. Mm-hmm. Not Absolutely a goddamn not. thing. That's what Wait, what'd I you mean, say? People, like, they no don't one. owe you shit. That's like, no matter how good you are to them, you, you're hoping that they will be there for you and you're... They don't owe you that. That's true. So whatever we do, you just got to remember you're doing it because you're doing it out of your kindness. Out of the yeah, goodness right. of your of heart. Your heart. Yeah. And you hope that one day somebody will return the favor, but don't yeah. expect exactly. no, it no, to happen. You're absolutely you can right. live the golden That's, rule, but you can't expect it. Exactly. That's, That's just true. setting yourself up for, 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 for failure. For failure and hurt yeah. and disappointment. Yeah. I, I, for I think a buddy of mine was talking about that one time. He's like, um, in his version of Christianity, they say, <laughs> Be a cheerful giver because you never know if that's Jesus right. coming mm-hmm. to see you. And I was like, right. oh, okay. What if Jesus is like, damn, you shysty. Yeah, right. Oh, you ain't getting into heaven. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I don't want this. I ask for more. <laughs> Hold up. Isn't Michael shysty too? Because he's like at the pearly gates waiting for you like, oh, I was going to let you in. But then I saw what you did to my sister down on earth. So now nah, you got to burn, dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's Peter at the gate, but I'm not yeah. too sure. Yeah. Oh, Peter's yeah. there. Michael's on the side. Maybe, yeah, because Michael's, Michael's all, at though, the gate. Peter's at the he's the, he's the warrior angel. He's mm-hmm. the one. Oh, yeah. He, he's oh, yeah. The Pop that question, they all Micaiah. Huh? What's that question he got over there? Nah, I was gonna go. I was gonna go to the spotlight before we get into yes. another question. Spotlight. What's, what are we talking so about? So the spotlight of today is Lavar Burton, as oh, many of watching him earlier from oh. Reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow. And, um, that was a great uh, moment of my childhood. That paired along with Sesame Street, um, mm. and especially just seeing like a black male figure like on television that br- that brings you that positivity, is teaching uh, children how to read, the comprehension skills. Um, and I also love the crossover they did with PBS. So, um, mm. yeah, LaVarber and I give that spotlight to him. Yo, that was a great show, a great memory of nostalgia. And he, he's still alive? Yeah. yeah. I just, I just want to make sure. I saw him like, uh, you know, uh, he's still yeah. alive. I've been like, out of tune. I, okay. okay. Yeah, I, I just make it sure. Cause I was I'm like, going, hold up. Is spotlight only all right? No, 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 no. no I, but I was just going to, just in thing. case. For all the spotlights that have been done like before. That. For the people who's alive, I'm like, damn, nah. I'm about to put that on. No, 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 no. No, it's, nah, nah, nah. I just wanted to make sure. Cause then if he was, I would say like, a moment of silence. He's still, he's I'm out the loop with him, but I used to watch. Oh yeah. I was just playing them for my kids the other day. Awesome, yeah. awesome. All right, so I think we, we're having a nice little dialogue. I think people are getting to see, you know, us peel that layer of the onion just back a little bit. Mm. They're smelling the aroma of how we operate, who we are as people. So yes. mm-hmm. look, another question, you know, I think we should do episodes like this every mm-hmm. now and then. So, mm-hmm. so would your younger self be proud of you now? I'd say yeah. Okay, talk to me. Well, my younger self, um, mm-hmm. in first grade, I said I wanted to be a doctor. Mm-hmm. I am the vent doctor. Uh, ah, I like that. That was smooth. That, that was smooth. I like that. that. So the younger version of myself also good. said he wanted to be a dad, a great right. dad. Uh-huh. I'm a, I have three kids. So I think the younger self, the one thing I did not finish and get yet, but it's coming soon, is the younger version said, hey, Get your mama house. Like, we all have heard it, right. you know? Yes. Mm. And so the vision is if I don't get her the home, the legacy gets the home still. They'll get the mm-hmm. estate and all exactly. that. So exactly. and I had a good conversation with my mom about that the other day mm-hmm. of what we're, what we're trying to build with the brand and what we're doing. Mm. So um, she was just really proud of it and just happy. That's right. Um, and it just made me feel good, you know? Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. You know, when uh, I was thinking about this question when <laughs> I was writing it, I was just like, now my younger self will be. Mm. But a year or two ago, no, he would he wouldn't have, and mm. it it just made me realize that sometimes you have to look. You have all these aspirations when you're younger. See, mm-hmm. even if they change, see if you still have that kind of motivation that's pushing the wheels to go forward. Yes, right? yes. and a lot of people, you just notice. Everyone is just becoming so content. Like they're giving up on everything. Absolutely everything. Everything, and just say, you know what? I'm cool with this McDonald's job. I'm cool with mm-hmm. this. There's no more fight. You're right. It's right. Not not pushing to people. failure. You know how we in the gym sometimes. Yes. Yes. You gotta push, push sometimes to, to mm-hmm. fail. Yep. And in failing, you succeed. Yep. Because if you keep failing, you try a different. Way. All right, I failed this way. Try a little bit. Try a little bit. You know, like I was just thinking about it. I went from three jobs. To being self-made. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, I went from 
And that's what my younger person would have been like, yo, push through the BS. Yes. Yeah, life is sucks right now, but that's not how it's going to be forever. No. We look, exactly. we look at just the radius in front of us. Mm-hmm. When we have to look at the whole circumference, yeah, right. You see what I'm saying? So, yes. so once we do that, I'm just looking at it now. I'm just like, yeah, this is where this is the moment, right? Yeah, here. yeah. You feel me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I will say now, but I had to think about that question. So let's go to Wise. No, oh, yeah, yeah, Wise. No, go, ahead. go ahead, Wise. Go ahead. All right. And then we hit it. the best for last. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> this guy. Well, I guess I'm not the best social Exactly. No, I'm just joking. Guy, I'm just joking. Oh, dude. He's still my thunder, too. He's still my thunder. What the hell is going on? But, yeah, I would like, I've thought about this many times. Um, <clears throat> Like, I even said it on the last podcast. Listen, man, I used to be a sim. I ain't going to hide it, of course. Mm. You know, but it's a part of me. I don't hide it. Definitely. I mean, even seeing where I used to live. Remember when my ceiling, like, used to literally be peeling You're apart? Right. Like, just falling oh. apart as mm-hmm. if it was just going to cave in. I've had that. I've had situations where I didn't have food in my refrigerator. I still have a vivid memory of one point where the only thing in my refrigerator was just a gallon of water. Never forget that. Um, mm. I got a better physique. You know, there's mm-hmm. that. I'm more confident in myself. I make way better music. I can record us now, too. I can record all my music on my own. I can do everything myself. Uh, yeah. I'm the person that my younger self wishes he could have been at that point. Mm. Wow. Mm. That's dope. You know? yeah. What about you? I would say for me, mm. it's always a, it, it's, it's always been the um the fear of failure mm. that's been so like indoctrinated in me in such a, a a young age and not being able to have a voice and opinion to speak. Mm. Mm. So I feel like in today now, yes, my younger self will be more proud to see the chances and the risks that I have taken in, in the current day age and age right now. So I would say yes, definitely for sure. That's been a huge drastic change because wow. I've always played within the lines of like, all right, well, I have to do it to make sure I'm pleasing this person or make sure I'm passing or never failing. But now I'm more into a mindset of encouraging myself to just take ten- chances and risk and just put it out there. Mm-hmm. Who cares if I fail? Just keep pushing and pressing forward. Trial and error. Right, trial and error. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What made you come up with this question? No, I I saw, I incorporate meditation oh, in my, in oh, my life. So... Mm-hmm. So I was just thinking, and somebody said on one of the podcasts, like, would somebody, would your younger self and the people you used to associate with around you Wait, be happy with you was now? That, was that a comment from one of the... Somebody like, you know, it's like how our thing set up. And somebody oh, yeah. said, hey, mm-hmm. they just asked that question like as a closeout. Yeah. I'd be like, and, hell yeah, I get way more girls. <laughs> and now I was just like... <laughs> I thought about it and it took me down this weird journey and that was mm. and that's why I said a couple years ago no but I now think a lot of the past people friends and stuff I I think they'd be intimidated by some of the work that you are all doing right mm-hmm. they I would think a lot they would be intimidated so really you're at this level now where you moved up and right you know that all mm-hmm. that behind can't you can't even be friends with any of those people anymore. So, yeah, I, I thought about was. that. I, I never thought was. about that. <laughs> you never was. I, I never was. I admit it. I never like, was. I wonder if I could bring around and my circle. No, nope, also sorry. And it's also kind of going back to what wise guy said. He's like a lot of people. They're just on there just to watch you. Yeah, oh, they're just yes. watching. Just to, they're just watching just so, to keep oh, note. Yeah. Yep. Just to keep. They're note. just watching. Yeah. Like, oh, let me see if this person stumbles and fall. Whatever. That's really all vali- they're there for. It validates their complacency. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, why try? I mean. Even just a tangent a little right. bit. Have you ever felt, and I can I, and I can openly admit this. I think it's a part of human nature. Sometimes you want to see somebody else fail for whatever reason, and then I've caught myself saying like, "Why am I thinking like that? Exactly. I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be like that." You're right. It's yeah, not a know? bit of energy. Yeah. Mm. Like it's not healthy. I mean, you can admit your own weaknesses, but I think it's just a part of human nature to not want to see anybody be better at something than you or be successful in a way that makes you feel like you're unsuccessful. Right. I can understand that because, mm. for instance, me, I have my businesses, right? And I've been around other people that have their businesses. Sometimes I don't have to speak up to let my business shine. Just, I let them speak up about their business all day. And that's okay because at the end of the day, just remember, as long as you're established with anything you have established, you should feel confident in that. But like you were saying, uh, not many people are still around. The people that made my kids cakes for the past two years are not here to make them anymore. Right. I cannot get those cakes anymore by any of you bakers. You're not here anymore. Why? Because times got hard for the past year. You were doing cakes still, and I, now listen, you want to go back Crocker to a different job. I think Betty, Betty Crocker got kicked out of business. Well, Cam Seal's still here. 
Like, I think yeah. honestly, what what really kind of spurs that I feel just comes from the psyche that a lot of people get wrapped up into the comparison thing, mm-hmm. and I, I think that's what it yeah. is. And it's like you can't compare. Like you're on your own journey. What you have, what gifts you have, and what you're unique to is different. So yeah. I think a lot of time people compare. Like, all right, so this is what the measure of success is. All right, that's cool. It may work for them. Right. But you may have your own formula. It is very I much. You guys all are successful. Even like your boxing is like that's super inspirational. Like yeah. that's a high success that nobody could be. Oh, yo, his physique is phenomenal. But like, yo, I hate the fact he's in shape. Like, oh, oh, I mean, works hard I for mean, that. That's I mean, sacrifice. Th- people have told me that before, and they would be like, and I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, I'm just minding really, your business, gr- doing your but own I'm thing. just minding my business, yeah. and I'm like, I'm really grinding hard. She's like, oh, you're showing off. You mean I'm like, no, like I worked hard to get that shit. Absolutely. But what I would say is that's dope that you even share that because I don't have that in me. I always want to see people win, so I always want, mm-hmm. I always mm-hmm. wanted to mm-hmm. to hear a perspective. That's real to, it- to say. You know what? I do sometimes have, have those that. thoughts, yeah. human, and I have I to. Oh, absolutely. No, and that's fine because you know that's that's part of our psyche for some. Like my weaknesses is in other areas. Yeah. You see yes. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm just like, wow, that's pretty cool that you shared because yeah. a lot of people would keep it and love. Yeah, at my yeah, yeah. They wouldn't keep it real, right? They yeah, would tell huh. you, oh yeah, wishing you well, but in their mind, they you know at least you will say, you know what? Exactly. Yeah, I wish I was there. Oh, also, yeah. too, um, I guess this is a different tangent. Like I was telling mm-hmm. you the other day, uh, one of the lyrics that I wrote was basically saying how, um, you know, the the bottom line is that, you know, BFFs turn. No, money turns BFFs into significant others. You know, like once you get once you're successful, mm. then it's like, oh, first you're best friends, and it's like, oh, but I actually always liked you, and this and that. Yeah, it's once this, you have that money, yep. It's this yeah. idea that people sometimes are unsure if you'll mm-hmm. be successful, so they sort of play the fences on the off chance that you do become somebody, so that they can say that mm. they can be in your your good graces. Mm-hmm. I mean, I live in a whole city of it. I grew up in a whole city of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. opportunists. Oh, I know this person. This person's my cousin. Yo, oh, this yeah. person's my cousin. Mm-hmm. Stop yep. saying that. Who are you? Well, mm-hmm. like, what, what did that great prophet once say? It was like back in the early 2000s. He said, Back then, uh, hoes didn't want me. Now I'm hot hoes on, on me. Oh, oh you talking about me? Yes, yes. That probably <laughs> you know, what that great you know what's, say? What's, what's interesting now is that since you mentioned girls, Let's talk about this social media topic. Oh, great interjection! Uh, right? Look at you with the segue. Look at you with yeah, the right. skirt. Nice. So let's 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 cool. so that it. let's show. So lead us into all right. What the video's talking about? Mm-hmm. So this first video, basically, as a man, a lot of times you don't want to bring things up, whether it be just because you got nothing to contribute, or you just don't want to have any problems. Apparently, for women, it's somewhat different. So let's check out the video and see why. So one of my issues with you is you seem to never have any problems. You tend to kind of just everything's go with the flow. Nothing ever bothers you. At least you don't say it. And although I feel like we balance each other, at times I have felt like you might be secretly holding all these grudges against me because you just never, ever have anything negative to say. And I'm like, I know I'm perfect, but not that perfect. Okay. (laughs) I don't like conflict. So to me, it's just like, is it that serious to start something now? But it doesn't mean we're starting something because that's with the assumption that in you expressing your feelings, it's going to cause a fight. I feel like in you expressing your feelings, it's going to clarify something and it's going to make us better. And it's going to make me a better partner to you because I might not notice how something's impacting you because your face is like stone all the time. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. All right. Let Y'all me. Love, hold, love, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, shout out, shout out to we still like each other. I like that mm-hmm. platform, you know. But yeah, go on. Yeah, let me, let me, let me like start. I'm working on let it. me start this one off. <laughs> um, hey, he, he, he ready to take off the box. No, no I, you know what? No, <laughs> it's ready, just bro. that it's just that Please I always time. pass it, so I'm gonna actually Please just start this one. Yeah, yeah. So. Shout out to brother. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> That's a, uh, he didn't even start yet. Yeah. That's a callback to oh, episode man. one. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah. So oh, yes, yes, it was. Yeah. So uh, live. Yeah. So um, good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So um, oh, um, man, with these people, like I don't know their situation, so they probably have a healthy way of talking to each other and stuff, which is dope. But through my my lens and. And how I see relationships operate, sometimes it's better for a man just to be quiet. Usually. And, and, and be, they be like, oh, they want us to share, but they really don't because 
the minute you share, you open up, they are quick to, that's another fuel to the fire, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't, oh, I want to hear your viewpoint. When you actually say it, it becomes, oh, I can't. And so sometimes for peace sake, the Bible says this all the time, try to live at peace with them. So sometimes men would rather be quiet. Yep. Than mm -hmm. to cause conflicts, even if she says it's not going to cause a conflict. That's a lie. Yeah. That's, that's a, a lie. lie. That's a lie. Honey, a do, lie. how many times you hear the honey? Do I look good in this? And you have to Remember bite that your time tongue. You I'm not, said I'm not going to lie though. I do be you saying be like, careful. No, "Don't look good on you." I'll be the first to be like, "Nah, I don't." Look good. Yo, you're amazing. I know <laughs> that sometimes it's going <laughs> to cause <laughs> something. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I you got experience. I, yeah, save me for last. <laughs> I I think that there are women that you can genuinely be share with, but they are. Far and Ooh. very few. And most times, I don't know, what do y'all think? Do you think this is like a black, like male and nope. female relationship? Sometimes. Or is this just like a general? No, nope. I think, I think it's general think male and female. Mm. I don't think it's but, a color thing. Okay, well, I'm just asking. I you don't, don't got to give me that look. I don't. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's feeling it. He's giving the tickle tickle. <laughs> I know. Oh, let me chill out. Like, I'll drop you. Oh, like, oh, man. <laughs> But um, mm -hmm. yeah, most times dudes, they have to like remain stoic. I feel like for a man to open up and be vulnerable is like, you be kind of seen less as like, oh, well, I thought he was supposed to be this strong guy with a with a shield and a spear. And, and it's like, then he does that. And it's like that that whole perception of him just changes to like, oh, well, he's lesser than, well, I think he's lesser no. than of a man. Yeah, and right. then it, it sucks because then they turn around and say, well, oh, well, men are psychopathic and uh, uh, sociopaths because they don't express mm. their feelings. We've been conditioned since very young. Hey, what y'all cry for? Shut up. Why don't, don't say nothing? Don't express your feelings. You looked at less of as a man. Like, right. in all reality, we're still a human being. We yeah, still, still get feel. trauma. We still feel pain. But yet we have to mask it. You still have to mask it. Also, it's just another layer. Ooh, another mask. mask it. Also, too, like, I, I, I stand. Ooh, look at you. <laughs> well, you First heat check of the night. night. <laughs> <laughs> you, was, you, was, you was urgent to touch that glitter, oh. wasn't you? Hey, <laughs> you was urgent for the glitter. I was ready. <laughs> mm -hmm. was ready. But, but I'm like, I get where she's coming from and saying that opening up about our issues allows us to discuss them and then That's we can grow dope. from them, hopefully. But mm -hmm. the caveat is that. I do think that there's a sort of romanticization, especially growing up, like, because, you know, we've been watching, like, you know, Prim's Hood Cinema. Shout out to Prim's Hood Cinema yes, YouTube channel. Fantastic. I love that. Thank you for putting me back onto that. I forgot how mm -hmm. many of these, like, Black Hood movies I used to watch. I'm like, I watched, like, 90% of them. And mm -hmm. I'm noticing a trend of we have to have some sort of issue to make us love each other more. And I'm like, why can't we just, you know, do right by each other and then love each other and be good? That part. Like, why, why we got to have a, like, why does it got to be like, oh, he left me because of this and then she found something else and then, but then romance brought us back I, together. Honest, what is I, stupid I, I, it's I, the honest, worst cycle. It's toxic and it's in no. the black and brown community. I, it, stupid. It's to the point where it's pa Pavlov right now. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. It's like, what is this, Black Disney? This is how we fall in love with each other? Like, we have to have some sort of trauma, and then we come back together <laughs> stronger like, than ever? I feel Isn't like, that what happened with the Black Princess, Tiana? She was broke, and her daddy was broke, so she got work at the kitchen, and then she had kissed the frog. Why she got kissed? Right. <laughs> yeah, right. She's the <laughs> only princess that got kissed the frog. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what about you, bro? What? Oh, them? With this. Yeah, this happens all the time. I think, you know, where a woman wants to hear what the man is saying, feeling, emotion, all that. Not for nothing, fellas, women are not using that to build you up. They're going to use that to talk to their friends and figure out, well, wh how do I deal with this? How, how do I maintain through it? Like, it's a selfish kind of thing, because if we open up to a woman, a woman doesn't help us get back to it. I mean, I'm not saying get back to it, but the vulnerability of saying, well, I need help, and this is what I need help with. Like, all right. You know that once you tell her that, she tells her whole circle. Mm -hmm. Men are different. You tell us something, we keep it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't tell our boys. We don't tell our circle, our coworkers. That would change the perception of how we're viewed. I wonder, That's where we're, we, don't, we don't look at it the same. Right. Women mm -hmm. look at problems, and they don't care how they're viewed. Men look at problems, we care how we're viewed. That's why we're solution-oriented. That's mm -hmm. why we look at the solution first, because we don't want to have a bunch of problems walking around. And people are like, yo, what's wrong with you, dog? You got a bunch of problems. You want some alcohol? Drink it away. Mm -hmm. I want to I wanna piggyback off of what you're saying. I have... Met, I could be wrong. I mean, there's always outliers. Not everybody's... Mm -hmm. Like, it's not a blanket mm -hmm. statement, but I will definitely capitalize on what you're saying that... Especially... I have many women friends, and I've even seen in several situations where 
they choose a relationship based off of who they can fix. Yeah. How they can build, yes. how, how they can how they can fix a broken man. Yep. And it's like, why are you trying to fix like why don't you try to fix yourself first before you try to fix somebody else? Right. How about you try to fix yourself for as a better partner it, for your partner? Yo, facts. Instead of trying to fix him. Is that terminology for that? Like like a like nurse syndrome or something yeah, like so that? Yeah, there is a term for it. Some it kind is. of yeah. term for it. Where you do want to heal mm-hmm. and help those who are yeah. broken before you latch onto that. And, but and that they, have justifies, they have a very giving, giving. Right, but and that will justify why you stay in the relationship, but you know, too. But you know who also That's said true. that? You know who opened up about that? Hmm. Mrs. Pinkett Smith in the Red Table Talk when she said how she wanted to oh, yes, fix yes, 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 August. Yes. August, yes. She said that like... Oh, yes, she did say that. Mm-hmm. And that right there, that's the you're problem. You're trying to mm-hmm. fix... You're, you're try, you're, you think you're trying to fix yourself by fixing other people when you, you should can't. be focusing on yourself. And A that's the whole times, problem the whole thing. Go ahead, bro. Go. No, you. No. I'll go. Nope. <laughs> All right, so no. The, so what I was thinking was uh, after you guys say that, a lot of times brokenness... Searches for other broken people, mm-hmm. right? It's not to attempt to fix. Sometimes we we mask it and say I'm fixing this when I'm actually using it to fuel that. Well, at least I'm not as broken as this, this person. person. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Right. And the reason why I you ever said something in vulnerability to a significant yeah. other, and oh, it yeah. somehow, some way, it's been used up. It's been, to you, it's been mm-hmm. weaponized. Like, they weaponize it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why guys are very careful. Imagine you're already dealing with the work. You're already dealing with outside forces. Now oh, you have yeah. an issue with your lady, or even she has an issue. You're trying to address it with solution. All right, fine. Then we say, all right, we listen to them. But because we don't add much, right, they get heated. When you do add something, it gets them even more. He- oh, how, how did you? Then how? Why would we mention anything? Yeah, yeah. I would rather keep it to myself, let it boil in, and show you. You know what? I'm cool. Mm-hmm. You good? Then we're good. Oh, yeah. you know? and then here's here's the really tough thing I think about relationships as we grow. Mm-hmm. At what point do you just accept that is who they are, and they're not going to change? And if you're going to be with them, you just got to eat that. Dang, bro, mm-hmm. that's My- hard. That's not that is Heat hard. Check. And I got to walk out because <laughs> I'm going through it right now. Why sh- I should walk away. I need to walk away. If we're mm. unevenly Ooh. yoked, we are different. Why stay in the situation? If the person Because is, you're committed to them. But you can be you're going to be committed to someone who's going to not try. But the, mm. the, that is, that's, what, a, that's what, a whole different what, what, That's what I'm saying. You what all us men we commit to we commit to a relationship. We even when we say oh in the beginning, we oh I'm going to cut these chicks off, whatever, whatever. Yeah, I'm, yeah, it's yeah. just you. Oh, that hurts. We still commit, but we don't ask them to commit at all, right? Girls keep all their friends, right? All that mm-hmm. it still goes on. And if you mention it, continue. If you, mention, if you mention it, it mm-hmm. you're the insecure dude. You're the, uh, you right. can't deal with her having male oh, friends. Man. See that? That's Is that because that's that's you're, you're, no, that's you got to get seat. out of the chair that's because the hot, hot seat. seat. Now it's hot seat. We got hot seat. Oh, my God. When you drop the mic, but I'm going to. But now if a man is saying, I have standards. I want my queen to take care of the estate. The children raise my legacy. I put the money into the investments. She's taking care of the properties, everything else. I'm just out here working, grinding. If she agrees to the contract, then that's the contract. Duh. Otherwise, we got to update, update the contract. I'm going to say it again. She probably ain't ready for that job. That's Preach it, bro. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to quote the great wise guy. <laughs> quote him. Relationships take work. But at least, at least with them, it looked like they you gotta, have... You got to... They're Bad on. Bad. They're on a healthy kind of thing because he's willing to try to fix it. She's under. She's giving her point of view. Yeah. But it's just the 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 trauma that we as men feel with a lot of women that, as you start going through the different relationships, as you're trying to find that right person or persons, depending on how you move in life, you realize you have to be careful how you speak, mm-hmm. how you see. Because a lot of times, what's funny, I've I've witnessed. Women de- demoralize men. Yeah, that's not. I, I've seen them, you know, make them into little people. Like, oh, you're acting like a princess right now. Oh, or oh, they'll call you homosexual. Homose- they yeah. love saying you're gay. Yeah, very they, much. They, oh yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they oh, love. Weird. You want to chill with your boys? It. You must be gay. That's yeah, weird. I don't know you. Why. That's they do that. Stuff why you don't want to have a community? You don't outside want, of my relationship right. because you have or because you have emotions. Yeah. But then when you don't have emotions, oh, you're heartless, you're cold. Uh. So you can't win. And, and, and that's and she why. she chases him off into another woman's right. hands. And then while he's over here on a date having the lunch, 
just have a conversation, she comes in upset, right? Right. Why is she mad? And this ain't yeah. happening to me, though. <laughs> so like, yeah. I said, all this episode specific. of Cheaters. So, I was a whole lot of Cheaters episodes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just looking Shout at it, and women have to make it a, a safe space, at least the yeah. ones mm-hmm. that we're dealing with. Not all women are like this, like we always say. Right. There are some. There's I don't even, you just have to understand if a man is reserved, it's because they've been they've, they've been, been hurt with, with their own words. Yeah. Yeah. That's there's right, a part hurt with that, their own words. Mm-hmm. There's a part in that where I, w- I'm, mm. I want to give her the benefit of the doubt, but saying that she feels like there's something wrong and she wants to address it and she, don't, she doesn't think she, that he's opening up. There's this back and forth issue between men and women where men feel that oftentimes women create a problem out of nothing. They want to cause a problem because they feel that the relationship is boring. Mm-hmm. I'm, I was just talking to you earlier about mm-hmm. when I was listening to Young Jock's podcast where <laughs> the woman is saying, that, oh, her man is great. He gives her flowers and does all these good things and he's nice to her, but he's boring. And she does, you don't know how to accept goodness. So all you know is chaos and, and that's what you create. Right. And exactly. dysfunction, See, all chaos, you create. And, yep. and there's like, when you got a man that's just like, <clears throat> no, nah, I don't want to be a part of that. I just want to have right. happiness with you. I don't want to do you that. Give them... Then they're like, oh, well, I don't like him. He's boring and he's not fun. And you know what? If that's the case, let me go date Future or whoever else. Shout out to you, Future. You give them Shout out to Future. Shout out to Future. Well, uh, Hoodville. Be dropping that. <laughs> Hoodville. Hoodville. The, Especially Hoodville. DeJounte said this Hoodville. before. He said this to me one time. You can give the girl the whole world and she's still not satisfied with yep. this. Period. You so give like a man again, a sandwich and he'll love you for life. Again, so <laughs> I'm not <laughs> with quiet and peace alongside. I'm with not. It. I'm it's not true. even. We don't know how their situation. It no, looks no, no, beautiful. No, no, no. It, it looks, looks awesome. like he's turning gray off the it, front. It, it looks like she's they're not healing. No gray. They're healing. So that's them. But this is just how we feel it's as men in our lives. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty dope. Yo, quick question. Like, I like how this is flowing. Yes, so yes. talking about, you know, self and woman and stuff Mm -hmm. how has your values changed over time in the context of any anywhere you want to take i left it so broad so however you want to take you want to go first relationship you want to take it overall perspective go ahead mom yeah i think overall perspective in the past like two years um or six years ago Mm -hmm. i became a father and then um as of since this episode but becoming a father i think was the biggest thing i got from my last relationship was um, maturing into a dad uh, role. Mm. That wasn't a role I had before. I never had to take care of a pet, never had mm. any plants, no responsibility in that sense. So mm-hmm. there's no real dad role. Um, so having the kids was like, oh, first new dad experience. Yeah. Now there's, well, you got to dig in and understand this life and how it, to operate it and make it grow and live. So I think that for me, um, becoming the dad, Starting the business um, two years ago, then the other businesses afterwards. Those things. Um, the question was, how did it what? Uh, uh, so how your values so changed. How, you, how your values changed. Yeah, so the time. values all changed because I felt like I had more. Before that, I didn't have my traumas fixed. I wasn't working on them, so I fixed mm-hmm. them. And then now I had self-respect, dignity, and um, self, like pride um, for everybody. You know, there's children and a legacy behind. Right. Um, not the, just the example, but because... The ones before me said there was nothing going to be left for me. So mm-hmm. um, my values were this legacy that's left behind now. Nice. I have a great opportunity to use my powers for good, not for evil. So let me go out mm-hmm. there, get the much bang out of my bucket can for these looks until I <laughs> age out and die out. Right. So Yo, you talking about fatherhood, right? Mm-hmm. See this gray? Oh, mm-hmm. oh I've right. been, Daddy, you know, I've been, uh, I've been fathering uh-huh. these dudes for a long <laughs> time. Hey, yo. How is oh, I? Hey, yo, I'm your father. father. I've been fathering them. Yeah, tickle, they're my sons. They're my son. They're my sons, tickle, man. Tickle, tickle. Now I'm just, hey, yo. <laughs> Hey, I don't know what he's on, but <laughs> but you know, um, Yo, here we support TikTok. we support gay marriage. So, bro, it's all right. <laughs> all you right, ever want to come out? All inclusive. It's all okay. Shout out, it's all okay. Mike. Listen, man. Oh, man. If I ever come out, I'm gonna pride that shit up. <laughs> oh man. Throw it in your face. But uh, how about you, bro? <laughs> hey, yo. How about you, my man? I would say just becoming more centered and geared towards, I would guess, self-respect, mm. self-love, mm. and just taking to the yes, taking the time mm. to mend and heal wounds and work through things and thought processes. So I'd say valuing self as best and as high as possible. That would be for me 
like what what has changed for me over the Ooh. years pretty much mm-hmm. what about you wise i like that mm-hmm. uh, i like that my values have probably mm-hmm. changed in terms of how i see women in, in particular relationships our relationships with them mm-hmm. um when i was younger i was definitely more you know i mean i guess to be blunt is like you know put the pussy on a pedestal for I guess to make it oh, easy to understand, gotcha. yeah. Oh, put, the old version. Put the pussy on the chain wax. <laughs> put the <laughs> chain wax. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> but um, just this idea that yeah. you realize, like, even though I don't mm-hmm. have the best relationship with my dad, and I don't think he's the best, to be honest, in mm-hmm. certain situations, but he did here too with that. But mm-hmm. he he is right yeah. in a sense that understanding. Not all women have the best of intentions, and there is right. a lot of women out there that will take advantage of mm-hmm. well-meaning men. Mm. Oh yeah, and understanding that you know you gotta you gotta value yourself a bit more than you value those women. You know, so that's a fact. Yeah, not all women are princesses, and at the end of the day, you want to be with a princess, so you want to be with a queen. Mm. Mm. Some princesses are afraid to become queens. I've heard that. Yeah. This is a uh, fear to be put into that position and that role responsibility. Of that, but it yeah. comes with that. Comes with that. What like, are you gonna do? Be a, you're gonna be an 80 year old princess, right? <laughs> hey, what's going with that, man? Ain't nothing hey. wrong with that. Prince Vegeta. Hey, you're right, but how many, so that's the, what slows oh, society down. Gonna, do, oh. Did you get to share? Oh, oh, no, oh, no. Nah, um, so two things that I say my values changing. The way I view religion now has mm-hmm. changed drastically. Mm-hmm. Drastically, I, I've been through the Bible front and back for, mm-hmm. for eight yeah, eight have. times. I've read the Tanakh. I read the NSAB, the Apocrypha. I've just been going through it just to study, right? And this journey just no longer having other people persuade my faith. Mm. It's, you know what I mean? Because I realize a lot of times a lot of things is misinterpreted or used with an agenda. And mm-hmm. that's not what it said. Yep, exactly. So, so like, a lot of times my faith now is stronger but a lot of people don't like the direction I'm going with it because you challenge. Yeah, I challenge. Yeah, I incorporate other things that mm-hmm. they would say is not godly at all, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But God made it. <laughs> yeah, so it, you take and you discard, wh- discard what, exactly. whatever, and you apply it to you. Exactly. Like, don't the Bible say something about it's wrong to wear the cloth of like different things weave together or something? Yeah, it is a really specific yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's in the Old Testament. You're talking about. Yeah. Isn't, does it also say, it also say something about like eating pork? In the Bible? Yeah, that's like yeah, Leviticus, but, right? Yeah, but Scavenger. then Peter Peter mentions it like, in nah, the New hungry, Testament. He was like, <laughs> God said, "Hey, doesn't nothing that you eat is on the fossil. Really? Mm-hmm. Can I call God yeah. and ask him? Yeah. So another thing I would say <laughs> is, um, it's when it comes opinion. to relationships, <laughs> I no longer just take the passive role. Meaning, mm, yeah, you're you're yeah, you're you're not gonna talk to me any old way, All right? You're not gonna no no. You're, you're not gonna boundaries. you're not gonna devalue my thing. Like one thing I hate, and this happened before sidebar, hmm. and then I go right back to it. Oh, you're working on that little podcast or that Ooh. little project. Oh, oh man. Oh, wow. you're doing that. I'm like little. Little. Like oh, she the, called my company little. I was like little the company? disrespect. Disrespect. The disrespect. Are you trying to be around? That's get not get out. They love to eat low, off low, of the plate, low, low, mm-hmm. but they don't want yeah. to get the plate. And exactly. The table. You the table, huh? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure so not. my my perspective when it comes to relationships. Yeah. And how and to really be a man. Whatever your man minds is more on the. Mm-hmm. You know, treat them well, treat them with respect, but you're not going to take any disrespect. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to treat them how the energy they're putting out. Right. You see what I'm saying? If she's acting like this, that's how you're going to treat her. A lot of things you got to nip in the bud. Nip in the bud. One thing that I just don't tolerate is like, it's one thing if you like joking around and like you like making fun of each other in a certain way, but name calling, especially when you're hurt and you say things out of pocket, I don't don't tolerate name Mm -hmm. calling. I've said it before and I'll say it again, do not get into a war of words with somebody who's a lyricist. Mm -hmm. I can say way more hurtful things, so therefore, I have to hold my punches. And you you have the aqua to back it up, so you cut sharp and deep. Exactly, Mm -hmm. so it's like, I gotta nip it in the bud. I've said, no, don't name call, don't say that. Don't Mm -hmm. do those things. And then also too, because I've said to women before, the things that you say, they reverberate You'll mm-hmm. say something and you say it just because I'm hurt or whatever or whatever you feel gives you the right to say something, but that'll reverberate in somebody's head until the day they die. Yeah. They will always remember. Like I just 
told somebody that the other day. Like, yeah, you said something to me. Dang, now I got it. I'm now I'm going to think about that for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And I told him that, like, right then and there. Like, Derek, what? thanks, you gave me trauma. Mm-hmm. Now I got to think about that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Got to be careful. I actually told my girl that the other day. She was watching something, and I was like, don't even show it to me because I don't even need to see it. Mm. And because I'm at trigger that you. point like now, we, right? It's a trigger now. I'm like, I've seen see. enough filth, smut, all that. I don't need to see it. I'm good. Yeah. Show me something good. I, it, instead of us going through the other social media topic, you don't like, want to talk about it. I think it's a good one. It, it is good, it is but good. I, I like where this is going. So I wanted to hear more. I just had a, a random mm. question. No, I just yeah. want to throw it out there. I, and this is. Um, I know this is a, probably a little bit too late, but with the, the shootings uh, in Buffalo, I saw that video and that's not something I people I, I wanted. Watch. I wanted to see what y'all thoughts or take is on this. I watched it and it literally did not phase me one bit. Is there something wrong with me? No, no. you just it's I feel like desensitized. When it constantly happens, you will start it's normal feeling to see that. Like, it, yeah, the the like, videos are starting to now look like. When when you have those it's a part of your life. constantly putting them out and you see it in third mm-hmm. world and other countries and People it's getting hacked with machetes. Mm-hmm. You and... only have a certain yeah. everybody has a certain threshold that they can feel something until they just can't feel anymore. When you've been depleted of all of that emotion, you just don't have anything left to mm-hmm. feel. That's just naturally how we are as a society. You're probably I mean, turning think... towards anger soon, huh? Is your tank, uh, is your thing going like empty becomes, in the sometimes zombie? it becomes apathy. I I, I, I oh. will and I I, I will I, 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 I will admit this and that's one of my flaws and downfalls that yes anger is one oh, of yeah. them one of my biggest thorns in my side and sometimes I do get terrified and scared of it because I've had moments where I blacked out but I always try best to like control myself like there was moments and times I had to stop and like do a meditation breathing to like. On the myself. It's a real thing, bro. bro. It's a real thing because global warming trauma mm-hmm. is a real thing too that people are suffering with right now. There's a lot of these traumas that the world and society and this media they're creating, like it's it's really happening and it's like really messing. Maybe with we weren't meant to be this exposed to everything that's going on. So I always say with people, oh, it's an overexposure, it's like saturation kind wow. of. In a sense. I think. I always say um, it's it's a sort of um, idea that I use when your third eye gets mm-hmm. open mm-hmm. and then you see things for what they really are and then you have sort of an existential crisis. Right. I think a lot of people get that sometimes, but mm. with everything in the world that's being shown to you, you can't watch the war in Ukraine and then the Uyghur Muslims in China being put in concentration camps and black people getting shot and, you know, the gas prices going up and everything else that's happening and then still just be expected to go to work and be like, hi, may I take your order? Right. It doesn't work like that. Right. It's too they much. Want, they want the WeWork Society to work with blinders on and ignore this. I mean, I was at a, re- a retail store, and when COVID first hit, we talked about at the table, like, hey, do you think we should, like, wear a mask or do something about this? No. Nah. Leaders are like, no, forget about it. Don't worry. It was just on the news. It's not even that real. It's staying on the West Coast. Don't worry about it. Imagine. And a month later, we're all, like, out of our jobs. We're all, mm-hmm. like, Gone. Wait, the building mm-hmm. shut down everything after that. She was very creepy, though. Imagine yeah. the Matrix, but instead, like, you get taken out of the Matrix, but then they say, no, we got to force you to go back into the Matrix. You can't come out here. Even though you see everything around you that's burning in you chaos. See, you see what is going you, on. But it's like, no, you got to go back into the Matrix. And you're like, why? Mm-hmm. Like, no, you're. F- they want you to go back into the Matrix. Yeah. That's how society feels. It's like, no, nah, don't worry about that. Even though everybody knows that we're not, we're living outside the Matrix. That's kind of the reality. It's hard to deal with. It is very hard. I don't know. I feel for you because it is a lot when your eyes are taking in that stuff. Like you guys live in a concrete jungle already, but when you see that stuff, like how it's happening, and knowing that this is like a norm, even the stuff we've seen in our past, and know that yeah, what has it's happened, still there. that mm-hmm. is still there, still there. Like that stuff's not fixed. So it's like, what? It does put you on high alert. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does. There's it's no not that. It's not, it's, it's not necessarily that is not fixed, but it's still gonna be ingrained into yeah. your yes. psyche. Because now you know you, you gotta you worry. have to learn how to like deal with it and cope with it and and, and learn how to get uh, above it though. But it will still always be there, and that's why you can still walk in the street and huh, you see a cop. Guess what? Your 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 fight or flight is going in. What that's, did we, what did we all do in the car when we heard it? Immediately we looked. When we were driving over here. Heard the alarm go off. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. We all looked to see. In once. We all looked to see Have where off. it was. Because at any moment, mm-hmm. you know, yes. we know that it could happen. Something could happen. Right. You know, make... I go ahead. Know. Maybe, maybe, because I I retract the statement. I've never ran into a good cop before. I think we did that police episode. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. And I was going through a problem with my lady, and I actually called the police on myself. I've never done that before. I called the police to my house to be the peacemaker in our situation. Hey, but protect yourself. And protect yourself, shout bro. out to Stratford PD back in Connecticut. Protect yourself. So, so, so um, you're basically saying, yeah, not all, but still a lot. Not yeah. all. It's also different still when, you, when you make the call yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was the thing, too, because there was no threats there. But what I, what I kind of also understood was... These guys aren't really trained for that. Yeah, stuff. like they're not trained for domestic disputes between you they're and not. your significant other. Like that's not that's they're trained if for, if I was to put hands on her, get my big ass in the back of that car. They're that's trained what they're trained to, to enforce to do. the law. Not like the the minute you throw yeah. hands, then yes, but oh, not somebody's to, ha- somebody's threatened here. Who's being threatened? My yeah, oh, take him away. Then it's, then it's because now you're creating a, a dangerous environment for not only mm-hmm. you but that the kids, whoever's my, involved, the community. My, right. My biggest qualm is that if you're a law enforcement person, and like w- w- I think you may know the actual numbers. How how long is it for them to train and get their gun? Not long. Not long. No. <laughs> no. It's, and it's do they go short. any like any extensive psychological Supposed evaluation? Supposedly, evaluation? they do evaluation. they do a quick one. But sorry, yeah. a little tongue tied. Nah, you pass your so five just tests, for you to get a regular you're good. You're good. Those tests, you're good. Um, you're good. I would recommend you watch uh, what you call sorry, I didn't mean to tap on the table. Mm-hmm. Um, the Daily Show just did a, a think piece on it about a week show. and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Yes, I about saw that. how easy it is to get a gun license. Good guy with mm-hmm. a gun, yeah, good guy with a gun. Perfect yeah, go example. watch that. Shout mm-hmm. out to good guy with a gun, good guy with a gun. Mm-hmm. It's it's wild, it I'll, is wild just mm-hmm. to know that you can be that incompetent and be a good guy with a gun. But even when he said on that, what was it like three percent of. Murder, bad guys are killed by a good guy with a gun, but mm-hmm. only the government's pushing. Good guy with a hey, gun. Hey, everybody should have a gun. Right, save America or um, save the world. Ballistic blankets in the classroom. Don't don't even. Ballistic blankets in the classroom. Literally <laughs> bulletproof blankets that you can put over the windows to prevent people from shooting into the room. I, this is this is a real thing that that, that was suggested. Gotham. In the news. We're going to we're going to those mm-hmm. days, aren't nah, we? Nah, Gotham. Even Gotham got Batman. Yeah. So That's um, true. well, you know who's gonna be our Batman. Yeah, Elon Musk. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you go, you go. He's gonna be like to the moon, Doge. I can so see Doge man. Oh goddamn. No, man. but um, let's God. let's God. let's end this on a light note, right? What are you grateful for today? Mm. Uh, I'll be truthful. I'm grateful for the brothers and the brothers that um God has put in my life. Mm-hmm. After the traumas of being molested by a brother. So, mm-hmm. like, I'm grateful that I've been in a place where I could have peace in my heart to trust my brothers. Mm-hmm. That nothing and no one could put me in no funny situation or anything like that. Because I watched that interview with Kevin Gates and Mike Tyson on Hot Boxing. And, and when I heard that both of them being molested, and it triggered me. And I was like, but then also triggered, reminded me of why, like, hearing their anger Reminded me of how much anger I had back in mm-hmm. the day. And I was like, holy cow. I didn't know, like, all the team, it all made sense. So I'm truly grateful that I could be in spots like this with you guys, have good conversations. Definitely. We can go on trips. We can yeah. do things, plan things. Safely. And I'm mm-hmm. safely, and I'm comfortable. <laughs> safely. I'm comfortable. Mm-hmm. I can open up. I can share. You guys have been around my family, mm-hmm. my children, and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm comfortable with that. And I'm grateful to God that I can be that. Beautiful. Way. What about you, bro? Let's well, start with you. you. I'm going I'm to end last and then go into advice right. of the day. Um, I'm going to go the narcissistic route. I'm thankful for me. Mm-hmm. I'm thankful for not giving up on myself. Yes, there's been people that have supported me along the way. You know, obviously I give them their flowers and everything too, but I, I think we don't talk about it enough. I want to thank myself for not being a quitter That's because right. I've even thought about how the parallels between mine and my dad's life and the difference between him and myself is that instead of trying to be down with those people, I said to hell with them, screw them. If you don't like me for me, then I don't mm-hmm. want to be down with you. You know, I'm, I'm thankful that I am who I am, not only just for me, but also for the people that I care about, mm-hmm. being a strong pillar for them. I realize a lot of my friends do call me or rely on me for whatever reason. It's like, I always got to be the Red Ranger. Mm-hmm. I always got to be the leader. I always yeah, you be are the, like mm-hmm. that, yeah. You know, which I don't know why, because I'm like super keep to myself and just stay mm-hmm. home and play video games. Mm-hmm. But so Craig, what? Yeah, you know, I'm thankful that I am who I am. I am, I continue to strive to be the person that the younger version of me wanted to be. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm glad that I have the chance to do that because I know not many people do. So, all we need right now from BK Media is just to add that audio. That Snoop Dogg track. I want to thank me. Dude, dude. I'm going to do that. I'm going to oh, do that man. with the clip. 
So I, I would have to. What's about you, Dejounte? I, I would say it for me, it would it would have to be um, it's a mixture of things, but I would have to say community. Yeah, add them all. Community would probably be the biggest one. Um, just knowing that there there is interdependency and and we all need each other. No man is an island to himself. No woman is an island to himself. And it's good that when you have people who surround you who genuinely mean the best for you, mm-hmm. who want to encourage you, who love you and appreciate you for who you are, encourage you in the right direction and keeps you going. So I would have to say that. And also yeah. myself as well. Yeah. And just pushing through and seeing that other people believe in you. Mm-hmm. And, great you know, feeling. feeding off of that energy, feeding off of that good energy is just is just so great. Just like... um. Like I think Kendrick said in um like Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe, he's like, I want to be around the people who who, who pushes me. I be want to be around the people who mm-hmm. feeds off that energy. Mm-hmm. Like where we're doing things, we're going somewhere. So mm-hmm. I just have to say community and self. Okay. Mm-hmm. Love, it. Love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, you, um, I'm grateful for my faith, and and why I say today is because every day, you know. A lot goes on in my head and I'm just like trying to map it out and having this faith helps me to 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 balance like I said before it gives me a certain way to just say you know what you got this 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 you can't do it all it's going to be okay right and then the other thing I am grateful for today is life every time that we are on this side of the earth we have hope mm-hmm. and when you have hope you can strive for a better tomorrow, mm. right? When you when you're dead, you can't do shit. Mm. Every chance, ten- every chance, no matter even how sick you are, if you got just a glimmer of life, mm. you have some kind of hope, and you could strive for some shit. Facts. So, hi, this is Makaya, and I just want to let you guys know that no matter what you're going on, whatever's going on in your life, there is a solution, and it might take time. It might take a lot of energy. It might take a lot of effort, right? But you go out and you go get it. Nothing is promised to be given to you. You're Gosh. sick, you go to a doctor, right? You, you, you are fat, overweight like myself, trying to come down, you go to a gym. You seek a trainer, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You're trying to be healthier, eat healthier, then you go to a supermarket and go to the salad section, go to the vegetable section. Mm. Not... So we got to get out of this woe is me mentality. So Start living for that. If you want it, you go get it. Right? You, you want $10,000? Then stop, stop shopping at Target and TJ Maxx and all these places. Start saving up your money. Mm. Right? After you save up your money, do an investment. Stop, stop talking about it. You got to be about it. I witnessed my man efficient here start a business from scratch scratch ain't nobody give him no money i see Dejounte here right making art put himself through a program that he's getting big bucks through ain't nobody handed him that program he had to do the work wise guy how many times you got jobs you're mixing music mm-hmm. you're going to shows Ain't nobody handing you a contract, right? I'm working out. You working out. Mm-hmm. You doing see the thing about this is we gotta know how to push and push ourselves. Not right. just pray until something happens. Exactly. But actually right. doing the work. Cause what they say, faith without action is, is dead. dead. It's dead. So stop being lazy and get off your ass and do what you want to do to strive. You wanna become that successful person? You whatever your success level is. That you go get that. Remember that. This is from Peep This Swam, episode 24. Please subscribe, share, comment, like, follow us on our Instagram, Peep This Swam, P E E P T H I S W dot O dot M. It's on Instagram, YouTube, same thing. Check us, check our page out. We have motivational quotes, we have episodes, and we have relationship advice, which we're going to add more to. And interviews. And interviews. You, you have a variety of four men here that's trying to share and empower our people. And when we say our people, we're talking about the human race. Mm, Hi, relax. my name is Micaiah. Will you join me? Smoke weed every day.